Imagine you're a guest at a fancy dinner party. You're sitting down at a beautiful table, enjoying the conversation, drinking fine wine, and eating a delicious beef stew. In fact, the stew is so delicious that you ask the host for her recipe. And she says, flattered, well, the secret is in the meat. You use three pounds of well-marinated golden retriever. Now stop for a minute and think about your reaction to that. Dog? In America, we don't eat dogs. Dogs aren't for eating. So chances are your experience radically changed after hearing that line. Chances are what was once food to you, you now see as a dead animal. Chances are what was once delicious just moments ago has become disgusting. Nothing about the meat itself actually changed. The texture is the same, the flavor is the same, the smell is the same, but your experience has dramatically altered. So what's going on here? Your reaction is an example of carnism. Carnism is the invisible belief system that conditions us to eat some animals, but not others. Carnism is why we typically don't envision the animal when we sit down, for instance, to a plate of beef, chicken, or pork. It's also why we can't help but envision the animal when, for instance, we're served golden retriever, swan, or guinea pig. Carnism is the reason that we're typically disgusted by the idea of, out of tens of thousands of animal species, eating all but a tiny handful of them. And it's also the reason we don't stop to think about why this is the case. When meat eating isn't necessary for survival, it's a choice. And our choices always stem from our beliefs. But we don't see meat eating as we do vegetarianism, as a choice based on a set of assumptions about ourselves, our world, and animals. Rather, we see it as a given, as the natural thing to do, as just the way things are. We eat animals without thinking about what we're doing and why, because the belief system that underlies this behavior is invisible. This invisible belief system is what I call carnism. Why is it important to know about carnism? Because our choices matter. They matter to ourselves, they matter to animals, and they matter to the planet. When we eat meat, we have to disconnect psychologically and emotionally from the truth of our experience. We have to numb ourselves from the reality that we're eating a dead animal. Carnism blocks our awareness and it blocks our empathy toward the animal that we're eating. And awareness and empathy are integral to our sense of self. So eating meat requires us to be mindless rather than mindful. It requires us to be apathetic rather than empathetic. And meat eating has been connected with the leading causes of disease in the Western world, while meat production is a primary cause of environmental devastation. And because our choices matter, it's essential that we understand where our choices come from. So when we understand that eating meat is the inevitable end result of a widespread, deeply entrenched invisible belief system or ideology, this dramatically changes the way that we think about and talk about meat eating. Like many Americans, I grew up with a dog who I loved like a family member. And like many Americans, I grew up eating meat. And I never thought about how I could pet my dog while I ate my hamburger without recognizing the profound inconsistency in my attitude and behaviors toward animals. I always cared about animals and yet I ate them, often several times a day. So I had this knowing without knowing. On one level, I was aware that animals had to suffer and die for my plate. Yet on another level, I preferred not to know. I preferred not to connect the dots. So I lived with this internal, moral, often unconscious discomfort. I had to maintain a gap in my consciousness when it came to eating meat. As a young adult, I learned a lot about meat production, and I came to realize that I was unable to maintain the psychic numbing necessary to continue eating animals. I experienced a profound paradigm shift, a shift of consciousness. What I had once seen as food, I now saw as a dead animal. While I had never questioned my food choices, I now came to become conscious of the decisions about what I ate. I wanted to understand what had happened to me and to other vegetarians to cause such a profound shift of consciousness. I wanted to understand how I had been able to spend my whole life as a person who truly cared about animals to have eaten them and to have never made the connection. 
I wanted to understand how humane people could participate in inhumane practices without even realizing what they're doing. I entered a doctoral program in psychology where I interviewed vegans, vegetarians, meat eaters, and meat cutters about their experience eating and or working with meat. And across the board, without exception, every one of them told me that in order to either eat or process animals, they had to numb themselves. They had to disconnect from the reality that they were dealing with a dead animal. The vegans and vegetarians told me that when they had eaten meat, they had to numb themselves. And when they were no longer able to numb themselves, they were no longer able to eat meat. And this awareness gave birth to my understanding of the invisible system that I've come to call carnism. My hope is that by understanding the invisible system of carnism, people will be able to step outside of that system to make their choices more freely. Because without awareness, there is no free choice. Because in our culture, we've all been conditioned to see the world through the lens of carnism. We're all participants in the system, for better or worse. So our choice isn't whether we participate, but how we participate. With awareness, we can choose to be active witnesses rather than passive bystanders. We can choose to be informed consumers and empowered citizens. Ultimately, I hope that after reading my book, people will be able to live more authentic and freely chosen lives, acting in the best interest of themselves, animals, and the planet.